Greetings, my fellow developers and unpaid interns. It's your boy, Michael. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing you how I fetch data on Next.js. Now, there's different ways of going about it, but I've sort of cemented the patterns that make sense to me that are easiest to write and that allow me to ship code fast. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So the first way is constructing API routes on Next.js. And you might be familiar with this where let me just pull up the file system so you can see here in the app folder on the right let me zoom in so you can see a bit i have an api folder and under this api folder i have different folders and then under each folder if you were just go down to the closest file you'll see a route.ts right and there's different verbs for these route.ts you could do get post etc etc now a lot of people fetch data um in the route.ts file in the, uh, under the API folder. But I use the API routes for one particular use case only, and that is for webhooks. And if you don't know what a webhook is, think of a webhook as an endpoint where external services fire to that endpoint. So an example would be I use Clerk for authentication. So when a user uh, signs up on my website and I'm using Clerk, Clerk is going to receive that user's information and I will have given Clerk an endpoint. In this case, it would be uh, my URL slash API slash auth slash webhook. What Clerk is going to do is they're going to take this API route and they're going to fire a request to that API route. It's going to be a post request because they're going to pass over some data to me. And basically what I'm going to do with this data, for example, in this case, I'm going to create a table in my I'm going to create an entry in my database and track whatever data um, that service provider has sent me. So I only use API routes if I need to for a particular use case. And that use case more than likely has always been web hooks. So that's what I use API routes for. Now, the second way I fetch data is using server actions, right? So I'll use server actions in server components on Next.js. And a server action is simply a function that has the notation you server up top. And you can think of this as a request in and of itself, but I just like, I like the developer experience if I'm gonna be honest. So I don't use API routes anymore. I write server functions. And the great thing about server functions is I can call them in my server components. So in this example, I have a server function called get all documents, right? A little authentication here. Uh, initialize the super base and then I basically read all the documents from this table and then I return that data and now by just calling get all documents awaiting it and making it equal to const response I have access to this data and then I can use this in the server action uh, in the server component sorry and this is one of my favorite uh, data fetching patterns. I love this. I'll never go. I'll never go away from this. Um, it just makes life super easy. Now, another way you can use server actions is actually in an on click. So for example, here, I have a server action called status blogs, and this basically changes the status of a blog, whether it becomes published or unpublished, right? So you see that I pass the slug, the string of the of the blog and then a boolean whether it's published or not if it's true it'll, it'll be published if it's false it unpublishes and the way i use it is in this component here I, I just want you to focus on this button right here so this is a a dialog that pops up basically asks you are you sure you want to unpublish this article and you have a button that says yes unpublish so the moment you click that button so there's an on click here you can fire off this async at this async function right here. And basically what I'm firing is this um, server action that I created. So I do await status blog, pass whatever data, and this server action fires. Like look how simple and easy this is, not only to understand, but to write. So I'm a big fan of server actions. Now the last way to fetch data on Next.js, for some reason you need to fetch data on the client, there is no better combo in my opinion than Tanstack query and server actions. Like just a quick pause here. If you're not using Tanstack query um, and you're fetching data on React, Next.js, um, let's say you have an application where all the data you're fetching is on server, that's cool. But if you're doing client side fetching and you're doing some nasty nonsense with use effect, you, you, you why? Why are you going through that much pain? All that to say, I'm going to show you how I use server actions and Tanstack query. So 
here's a server action uh, called get document by, by ID, right? And all I do is pass a string. And essentially what I do is I get the specific the specific document by its ID, right? So this makes sense so far. Now, the way I combine uh, TanStack query and server actions is as follows. I will go, so in my files, I usually do this stuff in utils. So under utils, I have actions where all my server actions are. And under utils, I have hooks. So I'm going to create a hook called use get document by ID, right? And I'm gonna pass the ID, right? And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to return this use query. Now, if you've used Tans that query before, you are familiar with this pattern, right? But a lot of people do use query, like use query on like the, client component in and of itself. What I do is I will create a hook, specify the name of the hook so it's very descriptive as to what it's doing. I'll do use query, I'll pass a query key, so get document and then the ID as well. And for the query function, I'll pass the server action. Oftentimes you create a function right here that fetches the uh, that fetches whatever data you want to fetch. But instead of writing a separate function, I just pass in the server action. Now, I've made the mistake before. I don't know if I can show you here, but I've made the mistake before where, let me just um, write it here. I'll say fetch data. And then what I'll do here, I'll do const fetch data. And then I'll pass over the ID. And what I'll do is I'll do const response equals get document by ID, pass the ID, and then return the response. So I've done this before. If you go through my GitHub, you'll see code like this. But I, I was looking at this the other day and I also watched the video. I don't need to do all this. All I have to do is just pass the server action as the query function. And now this works. And what's cool about this is, is I have all the benefits of TanStack query and I'm using server actions. Like, and with TanStack you get, you can have access to the data, to refetch, to check if it's loading, is pending. Like I, I highly encourage um, looking at TanStack query. I also have a video on how I use it in my YouTube channel, so you should check that out. But these are the different ways I fetch data. API routes for webhooks, server actions, I use them in on clicks. Um, server actions plus server components just to fetch, fetch data right there and use it. And if I need to fetch data on the client, then I'm going to use TanStack query plus server actions. But I hope that video made sense. Let me know if you have any questions, suggestions, thoughts down below. Again, thank you so much for the support. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.